Hello and welcome to the 14th round of the 2016 PCC Lights season here at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park in Ontario, Canada. Starting on the pole is Lenore Scurry, who won last week in Vermont. Jeff Fisher on her outside. He finished second in Vermont. Uh, the PCC Trucks race which just ended. Uh, Mason Yokoyama took the pole with uh, Sergei Yakovsky there on his outside. And uh, early on, Yokoyama was able to pull away. Uh, Matthias Leskinen back in the back uh, had some issues, got turned by Stan Mulligan there into the wall. He's had a very rough year, uh, Leskinen has. That team might be shutting down at the end of the season, as Sergei Yakovsky was able to use the lap truck of Mary Sue to take the lead about halfway through the race, and he would pull away from Yokoyama, who was unable to get by for quite a bit of time. But unfortunately for uh, Yakovsky, he would blow up just a few laps from the finish. Tough break. For Sergei Yakovsky, who was looking for his second win of the season, he won at Mid-Ohio earlier in the year, but that would mean that Mason Yokoyama, who won at Vermont last week, would come around and take his third victory of the season, driving that 376 SAR. He's looking to be a favorite to move up to the Light Series next season. And uh, as we get to the back of the grid here, uh, we're going to get these engines fired up and get you to uh, the recap of this race. And now Lenore Scurry comes around to take the green flag, and Jeff Fisher gets a good jump on the start there. Jeff Fisher in the 27 finished second at Burlington to Lenore Scurry. Uh, James Beverly getting a good run there on the outside, but Lenore Scurry is going to slot into second place right behind Jeff Fisher. Uh, coming down into turn number two, I believe this is. And uh, Jeff Fisher, oh, we've got some contact in the back there between, that was Greg Maddox and uh, I believe that was Zach Meyer, but... Up front, they're starting to sort out single file already, and uh, Jeff Fisher is going to take the lead and start to pull away a bit as uh, James Beverly tries to peek to the inside of uh, Lenore Scurry. Looking back in the pack here, we've got Bluto Belushi and Ron Yave uh, banging doors, and Yave is going to get into Bluto Belushi and turn him, coming onto the long straightaway. That's uh, Trek Tauger getting involved, Alex Constantine, Dean Wormer getting involved there too, and they're all going to drive away, but. Uh, gonna see if there's any damage on some of these cars. Looks like Constantine has a bit of damage, uh, but Bluto Belushi has not had a great season. Trek Tauger's taken quite a bit of damage. He's pretty slow there, uh, pulling his car off to the side of the road. That's a tough break for him. He had a pretty decent qualifying effort by his standards. And Matt Beck, at the end of lap one, is gonna get hooked there by Lucy Nectal Jr. and go into the wall hard. And Tiffany Matthews is gonna run into him. And uh, Matt Beck was having a pretty good run to start the day. And that's all going to fall apart here very early on. Tough break for Matt Beck. He's up in the top 10 in points. Tiffany Matthews looks like she's going to be done for the day as well, as she is very slow. But uh, 972 is going to turn the 16 in front of the field, and uh, Bluto Belushi is going to miss. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of the day for Tiffany Matthews, who has had a miserable season up to this point. Uh, I believe Tiffany Matthews is lower in points than both of the Tauga Racing Unit cars. And uh, that is an impressive feat, to say the least, as James Beverly making a move for the lead over Jeff Fisher. Haven't seen much of Beverly near the front of the field. Uh, he has not won a race this season, although he's come very close multiple times. And uh, he's going to fall back just a little bit as the draft on that long straightaway is uh, very important. As uh, Lenore Scurry picked Jeff Fisher and uh, Beverly's going to fall back to third place early on. Here's Luke Peller, and you might have noticed that he was in the starting grid. Uh, this is his first start in the Light Series since, I believe, 2012. And uh, AJ Murphy Racing was in a pinch. They needed a driver for the 28 car, and uh, Luke Peller graciously offered himself for that seat. And uh, here he is. He's running up in the top 15, doing a fantastic job battling with uh, Alex Posington there. Uh, the two Tim Hortons cars running right next to each other doing battle. So uh, good TV time for them. As Jeff Fisher now in the lead, he's going to swing that turn wide, and he's going to slide off, uh, go spinning, and lose a bunch of positions. Greg Maddox gets into him there. And uh, Jeff Fisher, uh, a costly mistake for the uh, former Trans Am champion, is going to drop back multiple positions, uh, almost outside the top 10 at this point. Next lap, and James Beverly has taken over the lead with a good shove from Patrick O'Hannigan, who's come up into contention out of nowhere as he moves up to second place around Lenore Scurry. But James Beverly, he is rumored to be headed to the Cup Series next year uh, to attempt for the second time to win Rookie of the Year. Uh, his first attempt was in 2011, and he lost his right after three races, but uh, looks like this will be a much more stable attempt 
at Rookie of the Year if it does happen. Uh, Trek Tauger going a lap down already, uh, and that car is very slow. Um, apparently the damage that he took was more severe than we thought uh, in that uh, first lap incident. And uh, he's been in and out of the pits already, and this is just going to be a struggle of a day for Trek Tauger. Uh, He's off the pace, and his uh, team car, the 60 car, has shown no pace whatsoever today, so it's going to be another rough day for a team that's mired in the relegation battle already. Jeff Fisher now starting to move back up through the field, but he's going to make contact with JF Davila, and he's going to go spinning off. That's going to do a lot of damage to the rear end of that car, but he's going to keep it going once again, showing the determined spirit of his, uh, his team and that driver. He will not give up at anything at any cost to win this race. He's uh, still going very strong, even with all that damage and those spins, as Sam Burkhart, your championship points leader, is up in ninth place. So uh, road courses have never really been his forte, but he's still putting on a very strong run here today. Uh, however, his championship uh, points uh, rival, uh, Dustin Oliver, is up in the top five and looks to gain at least a little bit of ground on him today. Uh, battling up there with James Beverly as Lenore Scurry's managed to take the lead back. You see there Dustin Oliver has moved up to second place and uh, that's shuffled. I believe that's uh, Beverly and uh, O'Hannigan is now back to third, uh, back to fourth. And uh, Lenore Scurry having an excellent run here today once again. Oh, she slides a bit wide and that's going to give Oliver a chance to pounce, but He's not going to be able to take advantage as we're getting ready to lap Matt Tauger here, who is way off the pace. He's still in first gear. Uh, coming now through the final turns, side by side, Dustin Oliver and Lenore Scurry. Oliver making a push for the lead with, a, with help from James Beverly. He swings a bit wide. Oh, they make contact, and they both go into the opening. Beverly just turned uh, Oliver and Scurry into the opening there, and they're both going to be done for the day, seemingly. Uh, Scurry trying to keep going, but she's going to uh, stop right there uh, as the marshals signaled for her to stop and go, and go on board with Beverly and see what happened here. It looks like he just swung wide, and that was a bad bump. And that's going to send both of those cars off into the opening there. That's going to be the end of uh, the 31's day. Seven, uh, the uh, 92 might be able to continue on. Uh, Bluto Belushi's been in an incident as James Beverly takes over the lead, and J.C. Carpenter gets turned into the inside wall there. That's going to be a lot of damage. Uh, Jeff Fisher just put him into the wall for really no good reason in his uh, quest to get back towards the front as Beverly O'Hannigan and now J.F. Davila are up in the top five, or top three. You see in the back there, that was uh, Zach Meyer and uh, Sam Burkhart now up in the top five too. As uh, looks like O'Hannigan's going to make a charge on the inside, but he does not have the horsepower to complete the pass. And Beverly's going to continue to hold on to the lead and actually put a bit of a gap on O'Hannigan, who uh, really needs some drafting help if he's going to make a challenge for the lead at all. Uh, so Beverly continuing to hold down the lead a, a bit tarnished at this point, his reputation in this race, I'd say. But uh, Greg Maddox now doing a fantastic job. He's up in fourth place, and uh, this is one driver who really did not have a uh, good spat of luck at, in the offseason. Uh, one of the top stars in the PCC Cup Series was unfortunately forced to move down to the Light Series when no one would pick him up. I'm not sure why, considering he uh, he has the most second place finishes uh, without a win in the Cup Series, and uh, I'd imagine he really wants to get back up into the Cup Series and challenge for wins once again up there. Uh, this Light Season has not been doing so well for him. As Luke Pellerin now up into 8th place, he's having a fantastic run. He actually finished on the podium in the truck race earlier today. He finished in 3rd place fantastic run for him i believe that was his best finish all season and uh first time in the lights car in four years and he's looking to repeat it here today with a top 10 uh we might see more of luke pellerin at some point uh in the light series as aj murphy uh, apparently is really liking this run that he's been putting on and he's a funded driver which is a plus for that team as uh beverly coming up on lenore scurry and uh uh, Dustin Oliver, who I imagine aren't too happy about what he did. Oh, nope. Lenore Scurry's going to put the block on him, and Patrick O'Hannigan's going to take the lead. J.F. Davila's going to go through as uh, James Beverly is trying to 
uh, take it easy around these two drivers because uh, there, there's a fear of retaliation, I'd imagine, as uh, Lenore Scurry didn't try anything, but she definitely held him up there as uh, Oliver is holding up JF Davila, and that's going to allow Patrick O'Hannigan to pull away. But a uh, big run of steam gives uh, James Beverly the lead back uh, later that lap as uh, Patrick O'Hannigan continues to hang on to the back bumper of the 34 car. Uh, here's uh, Denny Adams in the 25 car who's having a fantastic run. Uh, the DJ Motorsports team has uh, been pretty quiet all year, but they've been fantastic at uh, manufacturing great runs up in the top 10, top 15 every week. Uh, and here's uh, Damon Jones who's having another good run. Uh, running right behind Carter Fitzgerald. And this team is currently in the promotion battle. And, uh, oh, Carter Fitzgerald just blew up there. So uh, both of the Ryan Matthews cars are going to go out of the race early on. And that's not looking good for their hopes to get out of uh, relegation to the truck series. Uh, that's a very tough break. And we've got Fergal Sheedy breaking down now. Uh, two weeks in a row that this has happened. Uh, Fergal Sheedy way off the pace and something... Uh, inevitably goes wrong on that 12 car, so it looks like uh, Hannigan Enterprises is starting to shift uh, all their resources to the 11 car, which is unfortunate. Uh, as uh, Denny Adams is going to get hooked there by Sam Burkhart, co collides with Burkhart and goes spinning around. Uh, that was a battle in the top 10. Uh, he's going to get that car righted, and he's only going to lose a couple positions, but uh, just got trapped behind a lapped car and had nowhere to go. Patrick O'Hannigan is going to use a lapped car to get around uh, James Beverly once again and take the lead back. Patrick O'Hannigan, who uh, won earlier at the Green Valley Motorplex, uh, really showing a great diversity in uh, the aspects of racing that he's good at. He's good at short track racing. He's good uh, at road course racing. He's owning a team in the PCC Europe Series. I'm not sure what else this man can do, uh, but he's doing a fantastic job here as uh, coming... Oh! Oh, Hannigan slides it wide, and that's going to let J.F. Davila take the lead as uh, the 34 takes evasive action. And that was a mistake, and right as I was praising him, he spins off the road, going to go on board with J.F. Davila. And it looks like uh, he just trapped Beverly out in the grass, and Beverly had to take evasive action. And that's going to give the 67 the lead. Uh, 67 car already has two wins this season. Uh, looking for a third one here today, as uh, there's the ailing car of, Far of uh, Carter Fitzgerald making it back to the pits. Oh, looks like Matt Tauger just got in the way of Sam Burkhart, and there's something not quite right with that 51 as he's slow to get back up to speed. He uh, he hasn't reported any issues with that car, but that was uh, that's uncharacteristically slow uh, from that 51 car, so maybe there is some sort of issue with that car, but... Now it looks like he's he's back up to speed now as Patrick O'Hannigan battling for second place gets into the rear of James Beverly and goes around. So uh, 11 car loses even more time uh, to the leaders and that's really unfortunate. He was challenging for the lead as here comes James Beverly. Uh, that's a fantastic run that he got down that long straight. And he's going to take the lead over JF Davila. And uh, looks like that the 34 car is the car to beat here today as he just powered right by that 67. Uh, here's two guys having a great run, Justin King and Greg Maddox, up in the top five doing battle. Uh, looks like uh, King swung that turn a bit wide, and he's going to get hooked by Maddox into the inside wall, and that's going to do a lot of damage to both cars. Maddox is slow to get away, and that uh, the right front on Justin King's car is completely caved in, so that's going to hamper him uh, for the rest of the day, as Trek Tauger is even starting to keep pace with him as Luke Pellerin making a move now up into the top five, trying to make a run on fourth place. So Luke Pellerin having a fantastic run in his first lights race in four years. Give it up to Pellerin as he makes a move on the inside. He's going to take the position with ease from the ailing Justin King. And this is exactly what AJ Murphy Racing needs. They're one of about seven teams in a promotion battle right now to get up into the Cup Series. And uh, every position helps. Here's Austin Sanders in the 7 car having a great run. He's uh, he's running up in the uh, almost in the top 10. He's got Sam Burkhart and Gabe Messina right behind him, but that's a lapped car up there. That's Dean Wormer who's had all kinds of issues today. Uh, just outside the top 10, he was having a fantastic run at Burlington as well. Uh, Austin Sanders has not had a great season at all. And 
this is the kind of run that he needs to boost his confidence uh, moving into next season. As we've got green flag pit stops, a lot of the leaders are coming in. There's Denny Adams, Roman Carpon is in, uh, Justin King, a couple cars there further back. I believe that's Posington. And the next lap, we got the leaders coming in. James Beverly's in, uh, JF Davila, and uh, Lucy Nectal Jr. has made an unscheduled pit stop earlier in the race. Uh, he is not among the leaders, uh, but he is keeping pace with them. As uh, gonna see who wins the battle off of pit road as James Beverly comes out and uh, no one in sight. So Beverly had a fantastic pit, either Beverly had a fantastic pit stop or uh, his rivals had really poor pit stops as uh, coming out of the pit, still no sign of anyone else. Gonna take a look and see. Yeah, Beverly, oh, you can just barely see in the back there, that's JF Davila. So that's a seven second lead for the 34 car as that pit crew did their job and looks like Beverly has smooth sailing unless something breaks down on that car. Uh, looks like he's got smooth sailing towards his first win of the season. Roman Carpon mentioned him earlier. He's having a great run. He's up in fifth place. And uh, Carpont had a great run at Burlington last week, and he's repeating that here today. Uh, both of the Tony Long cars are having pretty good runs. Uh, both of these drivers looking to get up into the Cup Series. They haven't had a great season uh, so far, but they've started to turn it up here later in the season, and it looks like they, may, they might make a uh, promotion threat uh, late in the going here. Casey Lester a bit off cycle, but he's up in the top 10. Uh, might be planning on making it the distance uh, on this one stopper, even though he pit very early. I'm not sure if his fuel tank will be able to uh, keep him going up near the front, but he's in the top 10 right now. And right now that'd be a double top 10 for AJ Murphy Racing, and that team is uh, looking very strong in this middle portion of the season. Uh, Lester's had a few mechanical issues, however, uh, one at Dover that took him out of a good finish. Uh, he, Sam Burkhart mentioned him earlier. He is uh, running up in the top 15. This is about 10 minutes left in the, to go in the race. So Sam Burkhart's fallen off just a bit from where he was before, uh, but it's still going to be a pretty decent points day for the 51 if he keeps this up. As Beverly cutting through the field, cutting through the lapped cars, uh, the gap has been closed a bit, by JF Davila, it is now down to five seconds, uh, but that's just Beverly uh, trying to cut through lap traffic and getting blocked all over the place, as uh, Dean, Werber, Dean Wormer is going to make his life a bit easy uh, by getting out of the way. Uh, some of the lap cars back there uh, were not being so kind, as uh, Matt Tauger now is going another lap down. Uh, there's definitely something wrong with this 60 car, I think. Uh, Matt Tauger, he's been out there just soldiering along, but uh, that, is definite a that is definitely a loss of power uh, for the 60 car as he pulls that car off to the side. Casey Lester's good top 10 run is going to go away as he has to bring his car into the pits. Unfortunate for Casey Lester, I think he thought his pit strategy was going to work, but uh, low fuel is going to cut a good run short here today. Uh, he will get back out on track though as uh, Austin Sanders still having a great run. He is uh, up in sixth place with just five minutes to go. Uh, this is shaping up to be the best run of his season. He has yet to score a top 10. And uh, Austin Sanders, who is mired very deep in the points, really needing a good strong run. And he's pulling away from Damon Jones, trying to catch Roman Carpont there. So Turbo Sports gave him a fantastic car today. Although it looks like uh, Damon Jones is coming back with some drafting help from Alex Posington. The draft is everything at this track, especially on that long straightaway, as James Beverly continues to hold the lead. Uh, it's up to an eight second lead as some of those lapped cars that were blocking him have started blocking JF Davila. So eight seconds now, and it looks like uh, JF Davila might have also used up his tires in the process. Oh, swinging a bit wide, trying to get around Justin King there, but Beverly keeps it on the road. And uh, a win looks certain for the 34 team. Jones and Sanders still doing battle, but Matt Tauger is going to interfere. They're going to collide, and Sanders is going to go backing into the wall. And uh, Sanders 
that's a huge amount of damage to the rear end of that car, but he's going to keep his foot in it. He's going to keep going, only going to lose a couple positions in the process. The fighting spirit of that seven car is going to keep him in uh, the best showing of his career thus far. And it just looks like three cars went for the same real estate. Uh, Damon Jones, understandably not happy with Matt Tauger. I really don't think he would have done that on purpose. Uh, Damon Jones is a much better driver than that as going back up towards the front of the field There are only 14 cars on the lead lap and James Beverly has a 13 second lead with three minutes to go over JF Davila gonna see if we can even see the 67 in that shot. Nope Can't even see him as James Beverly. I, I think that this run is solidifying him as a potential uh, Cup series level talent that's in the light series and he might finally get his shot next season uh, in the Cup Series. Uh, not sure with which, which team is. Uh, Sam Burkhart and Gabe Messina is still doing battle. This is for a top 10 position as Fergal Sheedy is going to interfere just like Matt Tauger did. And that's going to put Burkhart hard into the outside wall. And that's your points leader done for the day. There goes Dustin Oliver who's still on track and looking up to make some ground in the points as uh, going to see what happened on board Messina. And he just ran into the back of him. Uh, Burkhart uh, that was a bit uncalled for from the uh, from the 93 car. Officials might want to have a word with him as uh, coming to take the final lap. Time has expired, and uh, James Beverly's lead is up to 18 seconds, so he's really done all he can at this point. Uh, barring something catastrophic happening, I think that James Beverly is going to secure this win. He's been trying for a bunch of years since I believe he's been in this series since 2010, on and off and uh, Andy Lambert hired him on. He saw that he had some talent when he was running in uh, lights and trucks earlier and uh, took a gamble on him and he it looks like it's about to pay off here today as uh, something is, that car is slowing. Something's wrong with the 34 car. White flag lap time has expired, but the 34 car of James Beverly is not gonna make it around to the checkered flag and his car is gonna stall out in this up uphill section and he pulls the car off to the side of the track. He is understandably furious. That is going to be the end of the day for the 34 team. And now the 67, JF Davila almost spins it there, but he's going to come around 18 seconds back at the start of this lap, but that doesn't matter. JF Davila in the 67 car coming down this long back straightaway has the lead. Looking at his third win of the season, uh, JF Davila having a fantastic run originally thought he died at the end of uh, in the middle of the 2011 season during our zombie apocalypse but he has returned this season uh well alive and just doing a fantastic job jf davila in his home race coming around through the final couple turns jf davila is going to take his third win of the pcc light season here at the canadian tire motorsports park for team canada fantastic effort by the 67 car. Taking a look at the results, after two spins, Patrick O'Hannigan hangs on to finish second place. Luke Pellerin, in his first start in four years, gets on the podium in third place. Fantastic run for Pellerin in his home race. Roman Carpont finishes in fourth place. That's his best run of the season, I believe. Damon Jones in fifth place. Fantastic run for him. Alex Posington sixth in his home race. Austin Sanders, round of applause for him after getting spun. Finishes in seventh place, his best run of his career. Denny Adams makes it two top tens for DJ Motorsports. Gabriel Messina in ninth place. Kelly Thomas rounds out the top ten in her home race. Isaac Parsons had a very quiet run. Didn't talk about him all day, but he finished in 11th. Same with Zach Meyer in 12th. Casey Lester's pit strategy didn't quite work out, but he still managed the 13th place. Jeff Fisher, after all of his issues, brings that car home in the top 15. And Dima Van Hall was the last car on the lead lap at the end. Uh, James Beverly, no words can describe the amount of pain that man just suffered uh, on the last lap. He finished in 16th place, last uh, car on the lead lap. Uh, did not complete the last lap, but uh, was scored as starting the last lap. Daniel Bouchard was the first car one lap down in his home race. Did a good job in that car despite not having pace all day. Lucy Nectal Jr. had some issues in the pits and finished in 18th place. Justin King. Uh, got turned into the wall, and Alex Posington uh, brings his car home in the top 20. 
making it a double top 20 for Turbo Sports in uh, what they really needed uh, in this relegation battle that they're in. Now looking at the point standing, Sam Burkhart continues to hold a massive lead over second place, but second place is now Jeff Fisher, who moves two points over Dustin Oliver for the second place in points. Lenore Scurry fourth, Damon Jones moves up into the top five over Casey Lester, who's one point back. With his win, J.F. Davila moves up into seventh place. Thir uh, three wins on the season, that is the most from any driver so far. Lucy Nectal Jr. falls to eighth, Denny Adams makes it two DJ Motorsports cars in the top ten, and Patrick O'Hannigan rounds out the tenth place in tenth. Posington, in his home race, moves into 11th place. James Beverly in 12th. Matt Beck had a rough run today, drops to 13th in points. Isaac, P Isaac Parsons having a good run in 14th. Roman Carpont, 15th place, uh, having a pretty decent points showing. Justin King, we expected more out of him by this point in the season. Uh, Daniel Bouchard uh, making it three Canadians in uh, four spots between 17th and 20th. Thema Van Hull makes it two uh, Tony Long cars up in the top 20. Greg Maddox really expected him to be contending for the championship this year, but uh, his season has just been exemplified by this race for him, having a fantastic run and then something goes wrong, and Kelly Thomas uh, makes it two Syzygy Engineering cars up in the top 20 with her run here today. And now, taking a look at the team standing, Sam Brown Racing holds a 99-point lead over Lambert Motorsports, but both of those teams are expected to defer their promotions meaning the three teams that would currently be promoted are DJ Motorsports, Petrol Tech Engineering, and Team Canada in a tiebreaker over Syzygy Engineering. Uh, third place through eighth are separated by uh, under 30 points, so any of those teams can easily jump each other. Uh, you go further down and look at the perennial bottom feeders. Turbo Sports has moved out of the relegation zone. Uh, one spot above Grand Strand Racing, Ryan Matthews Racing, and Tauger Racing Unit uh, are all in the relegation spots, and if they don't pick it up, they will be relegated to the Truck Series at the end of the season.